Welcome to R&D with Matt, the Mobility Independence Foundation's Vice President and Technological Director. The following is an inside look at our process for testing new and innovative solutions to solve mobility equipment issues faced by countless individuals. Okay, so today on Thomas's chair and part of our Mobility Independence Foundation R&D, we're going to be switching over to lithium technology. Um, so we have two lithium batteries here that we acquired from Lion Energy. Uh, and what I have set up right now is I have, we've had it set for two days with jumper cables, because uh, this was the easiest way to do this. Jumper cables going negative and negative and positive to positive, which allows the batteries then to balance to each other so that they are match set when we go to install them. And it doesn't matter where their charge point is, at that time you want them matched. So these are both at about a 40% charge according to the meters that they have on the tops of these batteries. Um, so now they're balanced to each other and we're ready to go with that and we will, I can disconnect those at any time. What we have here is we have a lithium charger that's a 20 amp, 20 volt lithium charger and it's specifically lithium because you have to charge to a different voltage than you would any other lead acid and each lead acid as well has their own voltages to charge to. Uh, and then this came with nice little quick disconnects. They're an Anderson plug. But what I want to do, because we already have some gray Anderson plugs in use around the house, I want to switch those plugs. I'm going to put them on orange so that we have uh, as much safety as possible. We're going to be using 24 volt to 24 volt, and that'll be our orange plugs. And, and that's where we're starting right now. Uh, over here, we have the wheelchair that we're going to be putting it in. It currently has the lead acid battery. I have it dropped down. We're also putting in a shunt so that we can keep track of battery levels. Uh, Tom will use an app on his phone so we can keep track of where the battery levels are as far as how much time he has available to use them, what, what level of charge they're at, so we can kind of track the improvement uh, versus a lead acid and he'll be able to have at least a warning at like hey I'm getting pretty low on battery because that's another difference between uh, your, your standard lead acid gel cell all those batteries versus a lithium is the the lithium will keep a much higher constant current so it'll be more of a flat line until it gets really down low on charge last you know 10 to 15 percent and then it starts to drop off on voltage Whereas a lead acid is a constant drop in voltage over its charge period. So that's going to allow us to keep track of what these batteries are doing and what they're capable of uh, through our testing. We're, we're looking at um, going from these batteries, which are a 74 amp hour battery. And when you're dealing with lead acid, you really only have available about half of that. So you're talking 37 amp hours of availability that you're going to use. These are 105 amp hours. So, almost three times as much available, and you're um, with with lithium, you have the full 105 amp hours available. It keeps higher voltage for longer, which makes them much more usable. So we're looking at possibly getting three times the amount of runtime out of the chair, you know, which can mean the difference of having to charge once a day, twice a day on occasion. Um, to be able to go two, maybe three days without ever plugging this thing in. And then this charger is capable of charging these batteries in under six hours from completely flat dead up to its full capacity. So that's another thing. Being able to charge your chair from dead to full capacity in less than six hours. Um, that's because this is a 20 amp charger. Uh, most chargers that come with wheelchairs are 8 amp or less, so, you know, it's all simple math. We're looking at 105 amps at 20 amps per hour, or yeah, a 20 amp charge. So to go to get 105 amps in here, you need a little over 5 hours. But as you step down when you get closer to full charge, it does slow down the charging. You aren't putting a full 20 amps in it the whole time at the end of the charge your your uh, amp going into the battery starts to slow down because it's balancing and doing other things also these batteries um, being lithium and I know people are very cautious about lithium these are a life po 4 battery which are very safe 
Um, we've done a lot of things and looked at these, and even if you have any kind of issues with these batteries, they have what's called a BMS, a battery management system inside, which what that does is if it gets down to a certain charge, anything weird starts to happen, you dead short it, the BMS shuts itself off very fast. And then you have to reset it, and there's procedures for doing this, but it cuts the power so that you're eliminating the danger. Um, these are actually uh, designed for RV and you know off-road. They're, they're starting to use them, I believe, um, in, in some golf carts and other things. So this is, you know, they're a pretty good battery. They're, they're also much lighter. Uh, these are about 23 pounds versus uh, the lead acid, which is, you know, 55 pounds or so uh, each. So that's about where we are today. And I'm gonna get to work and start seeing what we gotta do um, to eliminate some of the things we've done in this chair previously, and then set it up with our new charger our new plugs and our new batteries, and then have our shunt in it so that we can keep track of what's going on. Okay, so we have an issue. This, because the battery is slightly taller here, we're running into the plug up underneath in here that um, the other end of this plug. So we're looking at figuring out a way just because it's probably a uh, three quarters of an inch difference and everything's so tight on chairs that we're going to have to figure out a way to get it around that plug or possibly we may relocate, relocate that plug into a better place. Okay, um, I took apart the plug that's in there that connects to the battery plug. Uh, and I did a test fit to make sure we can get everything in there. We're just going to have to relocate where this plug is, which isn't too big a deal because I'm already moving and doing some things with these wires anyway, so I can, I can take care of making that work. And uh, we should be good to go. It's in, latch on the side goes in fine, so everything fits. It's tight, which I expected because they're always tight going in, but uh, I got it in, so that means we're good to go. Now it's starting to fit everything, Ben. Uh, make sure we get our shunt in there somewhere and get everything wired back in the way we need it. So what I'm deciding to do with the shunt here is uh, I took this cover off back here. We're going to place it in here and then wire it down here. We're going to end up with the plug that I removed under here. We'll be back in here and we'll have it uh, out of place and, and tied up as best as we can right now. Um, this is just testing, so not everything is going to be perfect and beautiful and mounted, um, though it's going to be mounted and secure enough that we aren't going to screw things up but we'll have more permanent solutions uh, going forward for things. And putting the shunt in itself is all about trying and being able to keep track of what is going on with these two batteries as we're moving forward. So that's what I'm working on. Um, I pulled out the old wiring here that we had uh, for the way we were charging before. I'm gonna end up putting this one, uh, will be mounted here where we have these others mounted. So it'll be a single plug um, rather than two. Uh, I'm going to switch this over to an orange plug once I get to mounting it on the plate here. And um, we're going to keep going and figure out how I'm going to mount, how I'm going to mount this here. That's where I'm mounting it. 
and then get our plug over here. And then once I get that all, I got a few things down below I have to do. There are a couple extra wires on the shunt. Um, this wire will go over to the positive end uh, that goes to the wheelchair. And then this wire actually goes in midpoint uh, down where the fuse is down in the bottom. Uh, and that gives an ability to be able to kind of track uh, other things with it. It just gives us more capabilities to check each individual battery um, rather than both of them in a series. Okay, so just as a reminder, because this has been a day and we are dealing with modifying an existing chair and going through and adding some things, and I also had to take some things away, pay very, very special attention to your wires as I'm going, and always double check yourself as you're continuously as you're going through things. I thought I had the right things, and then I started going back and tracing, and I went, hmm, I guess not. So, as a caution, always, always retrace your steps before you ever put power to the thing. I'm still a little ways from having power on this chair, but I took the time as I'm going through. Again, always double check. Never assume you're right, especially when you're working on a chair that's already there and there is so much wiring. And you've seen I've pulled out a bunch and we're putting in other stuff. So it's a little complicated. And I'm adding you know, some things for the R&D. Um, and research and just to understand what's going on with the chair and with the battery power. So always, always double check yourself. Okay, as we are in the middle of doing something that's not been done, we know we have a little problem with the size here. On this side, I also have to relocate the plug, which is what I am doing, trying to find a good way to do this and not splice and do too, too much to the wiring, try to keep as long in pieces as intact. Um, so, and I'm trying to use proper color wiring but I may just end up having to not use proper color wiring, but mark it and tag it so that we know that it's not the right color, which is probably what I'm going to end up doing. Um, just to relocate, just like on the other side, the plug towards the back. We put a different hole in here so that we're exiting towards the rear rather than towards the front, which is how that was set up. And if I had just swapped it around, I would have had the plug way back here, which would be inaccessible and it's tight and wouldn't be able to get the wires through real well. So, um, I'm stopping on working on a different wire and we'll be all good to go here and I don't know, hopefully another half an hour and I'm done. All right, so here we are. I've got everything, we've got it buttoned up so things are in there, right? We've got the cables and everything tucked in. Again, this is R&D, this isn't final model of what we've got going on. I'm trying to put it together as best we can working with what we have and the space we have. Um, going forward when we get into the development of, of our own design and own frame design, um, we're definitely going to make these batteries easier to come in and out because the way these come in and out is not easy. Uh, and that may mean we might be bringing up a slightly taller chair just to give us an extra inch, two inches of clearance which um, even Thomas has said on some of his other chairs, he likes a little bit extra height. Uh, while we do worry a bit about center gravities, these things are 
pretty heavy because they are a stout machine. We did lose some weight overall out of these batteries uh, because they're almost half the weight of what a standard battery, or actually they're less than half the weight of what a standard battery would be, the lead acids that we took out. Um, another reminder before you start doing work, unplug both your batteries if you have that capability or disconnect them or do something. Get them out of the system so you aren't going to mess up anything uh, accidentally. You're not going to short anything or kick out any fuses or do anything that would be detrimental. Um, we have a charge port on the other side that I have. I can turn this on. Oops, horn. Uh, I can. Not the best at this. I don't have all the practice that I could use. Uh, and right now we had a 40% battery charge on these batteries according to the internal on the battery, the LED system on the battery. There's where our charge is going to be. It's going to be a single port. Uh, it will not disconnect anything, however, again, R&D. Uh, when we have, when we develop a chair, our plan is to have when we, ha when we are charging for it to disconnect at least motion. Uh, because Tom says even... You know, because he spends a lot of time in the chair, he likes to have the tilt recline, um, the airbag features, any any other movement uh, that is not on the horizontal, any anything in the chair seating system, he likes to be able to keep. So that's going to be the plan. Is we will when we're charging, when we have something plugged in, we're going to try to find a way to make it so it will disconnect the drive system. Uh, Again, because the batteries are lithium, we're at 40% there. However, over here, it's telling me full on 100%, we're, we're full all the way, which is not the case, uh, without a doubt, that's not really what's going on. These are at 40%, but again, that's the difference between lithium and lead acid. So, she moves, we aren't getting any airs, she's not tripping off. Now, we're gonna get Thomas in here in a little bit, and he's gonna run it, and. I still have to change the plug on the charger to make it work. Um, so we, we have the features. So we got the, the tilt, and that's coming up, and I checked clearance earlier on the rear end to make sure that I wasn't pinching any wires or anything else that we put in or took out, and everything was fine. And Tom doesn't run you know, with um, Tom doesn't run. He doesn't have any leg supports here. Uh, but I do have legs. He does have legs. They just, you can see, this is a very long seat pan uh, just because of his body configuration. So here we have our airbags. I want to make sure that's working properly real quick since, you know, I know it drives around. I haven't tried the different speeds. So that's the front airbags down, and we'll pump them back up. We got batteries in it. It's on again. We hope you find our videos educational. Please consider donating at our website to help us bring solutions to those who need them the most. As little as $5 a month can help tremendously with our efforts. Thank you for watching our process and consider making a donation today.